Okay, that moves us now into the important concept for this video, which is the phase rule. I'll write down the phase rule. It's Greek letter phi is equal to C plus 2 minus F. All the symbols are integer quantities. This equation is derivable from the equation for Gibbs energy in terms of sum of chemical potentials and pressure temperature effects. We're not going to do that derivation, but we're going to use the result as codified in this equation. So how to interpret this equation? I'm going to step you through the steps. Number one, phi, the number of phases present. What is a phase? Well, a phase is a distinct object in your system something that you could pick out with a tweezers if you had it. And so you could separate a phase from other phases in your system. It could be a mineral, it could be a liquid, it could be a gas. Now I'll just give you one example. A granite could consist of a potassium feldspar, a plagioclase feldspar, quartz, and biotite. There are four mineral phases there, so phi in this simple example is 4. Now C stands for number of chemical components, so we call it number of components. What we have to do is decide what chemical building blocks are necessary to build the phases we are uh, looking at. So the trick is to organize the chemical components into the minimum number of chemical components that are necessary to describe everything that's of interest in your system. Well, this means we need to know what phases we're considering and then we decide what components we're going to build those phases out of. Finally, F stands for degrees of freedom. And this is how pressure and temperature can be changed while maintaining a constant number of phases. And we have three choices for degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom can be zero if you are at a fixed pressure temperature point. We call this an invariant point and we'll look at examples of invariant points in the coming uh, slides of this video. Degrees of freedom is one if you're following a phase boundary, a line in a pressure temperature space. And we call this a univariant phase boundary. Finally, two, uh, F is equal to two, the degrees of freedom is equal to two if you can move pressure and temperature in any direction and still have the same number of phases. We call this the divariant field of, of the system. The phase rule provides a tool to understand natural systems, rocks, and an important point of the phase rule is there's always a small number of minerals in any rock. It's a manageable number. You cannot have a rock that has a gazillion different minerals in it. It's limited by the phase rule. Let's look at an example now. I reproduce the phase rule. The number of phases equal to the number of components plus two minus degrees of freedom. Here's the aluminosilicate phase boundary. You've seen this before. Kyanite, andalusite, and sillimanite are stable in different regimes of pressure and temperature. In this case, we have a single chemical component. It's the chemical Al2SiO5, the building block of both all three polymorphs. They're polymorphs, they're the same composition. One single component explains the chemistry of all of them. So we substitute one into the phase formula and we have number phases equal to one plus two minus F, which reduces to number phases equal to three minus F. Now we substitute in three values of F and we can have one phase for F equals two that's the divalent, divariant field. 
we can have two phases if f is equal to 1, that's the univariant range, and three phases if f equals 0. Well, we can see those three examples on our phase diagram. Kyanite in the large area here is a single phase that is stable, and we can move around in pressure and temperature, and it remains the only phase stable within the blue range. Now, if we come down to the line labeled K plus A, we have a phase boundary between kyanite and andalusite. Along the phase boundary, uh, it is univariant. We can, the degrees of freedom are one. If we change pressure, we have to change temperature in proportion to stay on the phase line. Along the phase line, two phases are in equilibrium, both kyanite and andalusite. Now, at the invariant point, all of the univariant reactions come together, and only at that point, kyanite, sillimanite, and andalusite are in equilibrium with each other, and that corresponds to three phases for F equals zero. Simple enough, there's the application of the phase rule. Let's move on to a little more complicated system.